Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Hi, Stephanie. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How was your week? Good. Good. What'd you do? As usual, work and uh, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> work and sleep? You didn't do anything fun this week? No. No? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's too bad. So have you been have you been in classes this week? Uh, not all classes, some classes for mm -hmm. pronunciation maybe. Oh, good, good. So what what pronunciation were you working on this this week? With uh, with miracle. With miracle? Yes. So is it helping? Do you, ha can you see improvement when you're talking? Mm, yes. Good. It's help uh, I think uh, she's specialist in pronunciation. Yeah, she's really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, I'm gonna wait. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes to see if anybody else joins us, and then we'll get go ahead and get started. Okay. Um. Let's see. While we are waiting, um, Muhammad, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm an architect. An architect, really cool. Yeah. So, what what made you decide to choose that that field of study? Yes, after I finish uh, after uh, I finished my secondary school, I decided to go to architectural uh, field. Mm. So I studied architectural at university for five years. Wow. So, what made you decide that? Why, why, why did you want to be an architect? Because I hate math. <laughs> <laughs> because you hate math. <laughs> yes, one of the reason. But you don't. So there's not a lot of math when you're an architect. You don't have yes. to do math. No. Uh, we really? take math, calculus, and uh, physics, uh, some uh, formulas for the civil engineers. But I hate math. Really. I take really? a yes yes I take a good uh, a high degrees at math and physics but I hate it I don't know why uh, I love I, I, I love, love math. art and, and philosophy I love art and philosophy art and philosophy yeah those are those are good good topics I don't know I love math I think the only thing I really hated I I was not very fond of chemistry chemistry oh wow chemistry I I, I love it. I love me love like chemistry? I love it. I love it at uh, secondary school. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you're you're better than me. I I hated chemistry. When you under uh, when anyone get. I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, chemistry. Will yeah. Oh, I've got a delay. I don't know if it's on your end or on my end. Juan, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. You hear me? Is it is it pretty clear? Yeah, pretty pretty, pretty clear. Okay. How are you, Juan? Oh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. How did you have a good week this week? Sorry. Did you have a good week? A good week. Well, yes, why not? It was a regular one, but uh, it was okay. <laughs> I think we all had a regular week, just working. And sleeping, like yeah. Muhammad said. <laughs> we just work and sleep. That's all we do. Working, sleeping, eating. Yeah. Eating and join Kalingo classes. And Kalingo, yes. <laughs> so, I, do you guys have any vacations planned? Are you doing anything fun coming up? For me, no. So, no for Muhammad. What about you, Juan? Did you say yes or no? I, I just did it. Where'd you go? Uh, Last week we were in vacation. Where'd you uh, go on vacation? It's, it's a place near uh, to a state called uh, Querétaro. Hmm. Uh, 
there are waters, uh, thermal waters. Cool. Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. But uh, I, I need another vacation. <laughs> you need another vacation? You can't have yeah. two. Only one. Yeah. No, but uh, here in Mexico, this weekend is a long weekend because we didn't work in uh, the, this Monday. Mm. So I think I can go in another place, but I, I, I just uh, recover from the last week. Uh, <laughs> I understand. I'm actually, I will be going on vacation in one month. I'm going to go to the Philippines for 10 days, yeah. oh. and then I'm going to go to Taiwan for a month. Oh, wow. enjoy it. I'm very excited. I haven't been on vacation in three years, so I really need a vacation. <laughs> I'm tired. Do you deserve it? What'd you say? Do you deserve it? Do I deserve it? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I work hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are going with your family, with friends? Um, I'm going with my roommate. Roommate. Okay. Yeah. So, I will actually I will still be teaching in Kalinga when I'm there, but I have another job that I do, so I will take a six week break from that job. So wow. I am excited because I am tired. <laughs> and you're gonna do a spring break? Huh? You're gonna do a spring break? Um. I don't know. I'm I'm hoping I'm thinking about moving over there so hopefully I'll get an easier schedule here soon. I might move over to Taiwan and live there for a while. So I'm going to go check it out. Um, you will live in Taiwan? You yeah, I live in Taiwan. I lived there before um, 3 years ago, but I came I had to come home. So I'm going to see if I can move back for a little while, help improve my Chinese. Oh, okay. You uh, you learn uh, Chinese language? Yeah. Oh, okay. So trust me, I understand what it's like to learn a second language and how hard it is. <laughs> so I feel for you guys. You and English is not an easy language. I know because I teach it. <laughs> it's not easy. So you guys should be really proud because you're doing so well. So, all right. So let us get started here. So today we're talking about um, instruments. So, do either of you play an instrument? Um, one, do you play anything? Any instruments? I used to play guitar. Guitar? Yeah. Do you don't play anymore? No, no, no. No. I it. <laughs> Did you like it? I like it. You said you liked it. Sorry, what you said. I was asking, did you like the guitar or not really? Yeah, it, uh, at that time I like it, but uh, uh, you know, um, maybe I quit it because I uh, I couldn't learn more. I I feel stuck. Mm. Yeah, not progressing. I understand. What about you, Mohammed? Did you ever play an instrument? No. No. I I played bass guitar before, but I didn't stick with it. And I learned piano as well, but I don't play anymore. So, but we're going to talk about some really um, bizarre instruments. So these are like some of the strangest instruments I think I've ever seen. So they're kind of from all over the world and just unusual instruments. So we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, first, let's go into our pronunciation. So I'm going to screen share with you guys. Hold on one second. Okay. This a little bigger. That one, it's way bigger. Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about the S ending. So it says a common issue for students is adding S endings to plural nouns, third person, singular verbs. So or or possessive pronouns. So it says we pronounce the S in three different ways: as an S, as a Z, or as an is sound. So we're going to talk about those three different sounds and how to make them. 
So the first sound is our S sound. So what sound does a snake make? So I want you guys to, um, this first exercise, I want you to say S for as long as you can until you run out of air. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Juan. Can you, can you hold it as long as you can? Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so I want you when you I want you to do it again, and this time I want you to put your hand on your throat. You shouldn't feel anything because it's just it's a breathless sound. It's voiceless. So can you do it again? Yeah. So put your hand up against your throat and then say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean there's no vibration? Yeah, there's no vibration. You shouldn't feel anything. Okay. Yeah, this is called a voiceless sound. So, Muhammad, can you do the same thing for me? Put your hand on your throat and give me your best. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. So, you'll. The reason we're doing this is because when we get to our Z, you're gonna feel a big difference in your throat. So, when we make the S sound. It's voiceless. Okay. So notice we use this sound after vo other voiceless sounds such as P, F. So you got P, F, T, T, K. Those are all voiceless sounds. So the P, F, T, H, T, K, and H. So if you guys put your hand back on your throat, make a P sound. P, 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 P. Make an F sound. See, no buzzing. What about th? Th, th? That one's a little buzzy. Th, 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 th. And your t, 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 t. You got your k, 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 k. and h. <sighs> See? K, k, it's it's boilers. K, k. I think from the throat or no? K is voiceless, but it's a, but be, it's not. A buzzy sound, but it's still kind of in your throat. You kind of pull K from the back of your throat. So, as opposed to like um, um, like a buzzier sound, there's no vibration, but you do feel it in your throat because K starts back there. So you will feel the K, but it's not a buzz. So, for instance, the word walks. It ends with that that K sound, and then you have your S. So it's that voiceless S walks. Oh. Yeah, bets, tops. Tops. Yeah. So that's the first way that we pronounce our S ending. Now we have the Z ending. So this is still the letter S, but sometimes it's pronounced like a Z. So I'm going to start with you, Muhammad. Go ahead, put your hand back on your throat. And hold the zzz for as long as you can. Okay. Yes, I I feel uh, vibration in my throat. Good. Okay, go ahead, one. Can you do it for me? Okay. <laughs> that was very long. <laughs> <laughs> you have good. You have strong lungs. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you feel the vibration in your throat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, this is a different sound. So, this is important when you guys are making your S's. You should never feel that vibration when you're making your Z's. You should always feel it. It's your vocal cords should be vibrating. So, we use the Z sound after other voiced sounds, like. You know, they give you some examples: films, re records, walls. So if you say that m, mm, if you say that m sound, m, mm, it's buzzy. Mm, you can feel the vibration. D sound, d, 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 d. If you put your hand on your throat, d, d, you should feel vibration. D, d, d. Okay. And your l, 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 it's vibrating. So if you have a sound, and if you're not sure if a sound ends, if it's voiced or if it's not voiced, go ahead and say it and put your hand on your throat. And if you hear, if you feel a vibration, 
you know that's a voice sound. If you don't, you know it's a voiceless sound. And you'll know whether or not to use your S ending or your Z ending. Okay. So, films, records, walls. So can you guys say those three words for me? Juan, can you start me off? Can you say the, those three words? Films, records, walls. Yes. Muhammad, can you say them for me? Okay. Films, records, walls. Very good. So when you say it, make sure you, you know, try to be conscious of whether or not you're buzzing at the end. Films, records, walls. It's a Z sound, so you should feel some vibration when you end those words. Okay, okay. Films, records, words. Very nice. Okay, so our last, <laughs> I like their point here, our last sound that you can do with the S ending is an is sound. So they say, what sound does an uncertain B make? So is, is, is. I've never heard an uncertain B, but I suppose this is what they might sound like. <laughs> So you use the is sound um, if the end of the word is like an S. So, for example, like S, S, H, C, H, J, or Z. So can, who can give me a word that ends in an S? Mm, like the samples? Watches? Yeah. So, well, watch... That's plural, so watch really ends in a CH. So can you give me a word and it's singular, it ends in an S? No. Oh, no. Okay. Um, you could say, for example, um, gas. Gas ends in an S. So how would you make that set, that word plural? Now remember this any any word that ends in an S like sound, what sound do we put on the end to make it plural? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So how do we pronounce the ES sound? From our, our uncertain our uncertain B. What does he say? Oh uh, I, I gotta go, so sorry. I uh, hope to see you later. No problem, see you later. Yeah, you too. Okay. So Mohammed when we're at the end of a word that ends in an S, how will we make it plural? Yeah, we add the ES or S. It depends. Yeah. Or IES. If, if, it, uh, if the word ends by Y, we add IES. Very good. And so when we want to say it out loud, so let's say our word is gas. So we're talking about... G gases. Very good. So we have that IS sound. And double. Gases. Yeah. So... Um, what about, can you give me a word that ends in an S-H? S-H? Mm-hmm. Wash. Wash. So how would you make it plural? Uh, washes. Perfect. Washes. That's perfect. So anytime you see these S-like sounds, S, S-H, C-H, J, or Z, so that's S, Sh, Ch, Ch, Z. All of those sounds, see how similar they are? Can you say that all those these five sounds right here start with the S and just make those sounds for me? Okay. Yeah. You see how similar those sounds are? If you have a word that ends in an S-like sound, so those sounds, then you want to add the is sound to the end to make it plural, watches, purses, roses. So, I mean, the sounds are not the same, but it's far away from a D or a K or a P or an F. So these are more S-like sounds. Okay. So that's that's our pronunciation. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Yes. Stephanie, uh, the difference between SH and CH in the voice. Okay, so SH is SH and your CH is so one is more aspirated than the other. Do you know what that means when you say a sound is aspirated? No. Okay, so that that refers to the amount of air that you're pushing out of your mouth. So when you say shh, 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 the SH, you're barely pushing any air out. 
Now, if you put your tongue in the exact same spot, just like you're about to say an SH, but you force more air out. For the SH or the C? The CH. So push more air out. Yeah. So it's the amount of air that you're pushing out. The SH is soft and it's not a lot of force. The CH is very strong and you're pushing more air out of your mouth. Sheep challenge. Yeah. As opposed to sheep. So can you say sheep and cheap? Can you write it? Sure. Oh, okay. Sheep and cheap. Yeah, the very good. Cheap. Like uh, Schwan the sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and cheap. Not expensive. Very good. So when you say sheep, hold that SH sound. So sheep. 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 Cheap. It's very cheap. Yeah, so when you hold that, it's harder to hold because it requires more air. So try to yeah. hold the CH and cheap. 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 Yeah. Do you, cheap, see, do, do you feel how much do, harder it is? Cheap. Yes. It's because in order to make the CH sound, you have to push more air out. So you run out of air faster trying to hold a CH. You can hold an SH for a long time. Because you're barely forcing that air out. But when you make that CH sound, you really push. And you'll run out of air very quickly. Okay. Okay. So do you have any more questions about pronunciation before we move on to our grammar? No. Okay. It's okay. Um, since Juan had to go, you're now the only student, so you get to ask any question you want. <laughs> you get all the attention. Okay. So, I'm going to actually make this a little smaller. All right, so we're talking about um, plurals and our grammar. So we're talking about non-count and, and count um, nouns. So can you read that first um, paragraph for me. So this is the, what you see on the screen. Can you read that for me? Okay. First, we refer to count nouns as the things you can easily count. Two trees, five cars, a dozen chairs, two million do dollars. Most nouns are count nouns. Okay, very good. So count nouns are things that can be easily counted. So these are your almost almost all nouns are count nouns. There aren't many that are not. So I wanna let's look next at what are non count nouns so you can see the difference. So um, we're gonna actually skip that and we'll come back to it. So Third, we refer to non-count nouns as those nouns that do not have a plural or singular form. They are broad concepts, substances, or categories of more specific things. For example, liquids, solids, and gases. So water, oil, blood, ice, silver, gold, cotton, wool, oxygen, these kinds of things. So if you wanted to say, you know, you had water, but more than one, is there a plural form of that word? No. Yeah, there's not. So things like that that have a very broad concept, we don't have, you don't call them a count noun because you, you can't say I have two water, I have three oils, I have four oxygens. It doesn't make any sense. So. And ice, I can't make it plural. Ice, ice too. Um, ice is actually plural. It's pronounced the exact same. So when and I'm not sure they don't really let's see mm, they don't really get into it very much in this lesson. But with items such as those like ice, water, gas, things like that, we use things called quantifiers to count them. 
because they, they, they are non-count nouns. So you would say a, one cube of ice or two cubes of ice or three cubes of ice. You wouldn't okay. say, I have two ice. Yes. So we make, we, uh, we make the, the ruler before the ice. Two yeah. Cups of. Yeah, so whatever quantifier you're using, that's what becomes plural. But the word itself never does. And you money know. is not uh, not uh, uh, non-count. Money? Money. Money is non-count. You know, if you have a bag of money, then you quantify it by bag. So then you have bag. one bag, two bags, three bags. So things like that, general concepts, you know, substances, things like that are considered non-count nouns. So if you wanted to count them, you'd need a quantifier in front of them. So, um... It says, second, you can make count nouns plural by adding an S or an ES at the end. So you already explained this to me earlier. One apple, three apples, one house, two houses, one class, six classes. So I know you're, um, you're, you're familiar with how to make things plural. So you talked about our... Okay, so this is important. There are a few irregular count nouns that don't have an S or an ES at the end. So for example, child when it becomes plural or when it's being counted children children person becomes people My, mouse becomes mice yeah and actually in English we have a lot of words that we have taken from Latin and so then their plural really doesn't make any sense so for example mouse the plural is mice but if you have, do you know what a, do you know what dice are? Dice are? Dice. Have you ever heard the word dice? No. They're like little um, cubes with, um, like on each side there's a six-sided block, and on each side it has a dot on it. So one side has one dot, one side has two, one side has three, the other has four. Oh, you okay, use it to okay. play games. Okay. okay. So in English, we call them dice, but if you have two of them, they're called die, because it's Latin. <laughs> so the ending gets really weird. So you gotta watch out for things like that. Certain Because our language has so many words from other languages, sometimes the rules get a little funny. Yeah. But for most words, you can add an S or an ES. Okay, so let's talk about more of our non-count nouns. So. First thing, we have substances, liquids, solids, and gases. Um, so we went over those. We also have general categories of food and drinks, such as milk, wine, cheese, meat, rice, flour, salt, sugar, pasta. So with these things, there's no plural form of them. You, don't, you can't say milks or wines or cheese. Actually, you do hear people say cheeses. It's not right, but you will hear it. So if you hear it, you know they're wrong. That's okay. <laughs> don't repeat that. And you will hear people say meats. So, again, it's good to learn it the correct way because you will hear people make those mistakes because, you know, English speakers make mistakes in their own language all the time. Um, Stephanie, how how you say if you want to make uh, meat or rice in a pruller? You say uh, for rice. So, um... Or flour or... How do you make rice plural? Well, yeah. again, because these these words don't have a plural, you would need a quantifier in front of it. So um, if you say you wanted somebody to pick up some rice from the store and you wanted two of them, then you would have to have a quantifier. So can you grab me two bags of rice? Or, you know, this recipe calls for two cups of rice. But the rice itself doesn't become plural. The word, in, the quantifier in front of it becomes plural. Okay. And two kilos of meat? Yeah. Or two pounds of meat? <laughs> yeah, kilos of sun. I was like, I'm not sure how much that is, but yes. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yes. I transform it directly. Two pounds of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm terrible. I don't know anything about kilos. 
I have no idea of how to do the measure, the the weighing. I transform it directly. Two pounds of me. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, when you have words that are non-count nouns, you will have to have a word in front of them to to measure them by. So, you know, a bottle of wine, a you know, a block of cheese, or a pound of cheese, or you know, a pinch of salt. The word itself has no plural. So if you want to make words like this plural, you need to figure out which word you need to quantify it. Um, yeah, general activities ending in ing. So swimming, playing, teaching, surfing, there's no plural. Sports, football, baseball, tennis, basketball, no plural. Um, money, software, information, lumber, furniture, things like this. There's Look, we've got a, a nice long list. Diseases and disorders. I'm going to make you read all these because there's so many. <laughs> okay, you get to read from now on. So, oh, I, I went too far. Okay, so can, I'm gonna, can you start with diseases and disorders? Okay. Diseases and disorders. <laughs> I gave you the tough one, I know. <laughs> So mean. Okay, so that's measles. Measles. Mumps. 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 Mm -hmm. Arthritis. <laughs> Arthritis. 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 Anorexia. Yes, very this good. Is not English. This is uh, maybe Greek or Latin. It's Latin. All of our diseases, most of our medical and legal words in English derive from Latin. So they're, they're strange to us, but because we grew up using them, we're just used to them. But almost all of our medical terms and our legal terms are Latin words. Okay, okay fields of study. Okay, Field, fields of study. Biology, chemistry, Economics, engineering, medicine. All right. Natural phenomena. I, uh, I can't uh, make uh, ke chemistry in uh, plural. Chemistry. Yeah, these are still things you can't make plural. This is our long list. <laughs> so none of these things have a plural version. So. You know, if you say you can't make biology a plural word, now you could say I have two biology classes, so the class is plural, but there's no plural form of biology or economics or engineering or medicine. So all of these words that we're reading, there is no plural, none of these things. So these are like general concepts or, you know, natural phenomena or fields of study or diseases or okay. any of that stuff, no plural. So go ahead, you get to read through all of them. You get to practice your pronunciation. <laughs> Natural phenomena. Phenomena. Okay. Phenomena. Phenomena. Yeah. Phenomena. Natural phenomena. Yeah, that's a fun word. <laughs> Difficult. Weather. Heat. Rain, humidity, and cold. Yes, very good. And phenomena, most people, you don't really hear that word too often, but you will hear somebody being called phenomenal. That means, phenomenal. like, really fantastic, amazing. So you that's a good word to learn. Phenomenal is a big compliment. If somebody says, man, you're really doing phenomenal, that means they're, you're doing so, so well. Okay, you got two more ideas and concept, concepts and languages. Okay, ideas and concepts, information, knowledge, confidence, importance, justice, love, and peace. Yeah, and languages. Languages, English. Mandarin, Mandarin, Arabic, Spanish, Latin, and Greek. 
Okay. So that very nice long, long list of things we just read are all, all considered non-count nouns. So all of that are non-count nouns. So if you are trying to decide if a word you're using, if it's a count noun or a non-count noun, just actually just try it out. So for example, um, sun, you know, sunshine. Is sunshine a count noun or a non-count noun? What do you think? Non-count noun. Uh, non-count uh, noun. Yeah, it's natural phenomena. So, you know, if you're confused, you might say, "Oh, look, there's sunshines," and if it doesn't, it won't sound quite right to you. You know, so try. To, you know, there are two rays of sunshine. That's you could do it like that. But if you're not sure. Think about, is it really broad and general and, you know, is it a field of study? Is it a natural phenomena or is it something that can be counted? For example, you know, books. I have two books, bottles, tables, cats, dogs, things like that. Okay, so fourth, we use different words. You, I'm sorry, we use different words when discussing count and non-count nouns. I don't know why they put used in there. It says you compare count nouns with fewer and more. So if you're talking about a noun that can be counted, you say more dogs or fewer students. So that's when you don't use fewer and more with non-count nouns, so just count nouns. Um, and, um, and I can say few dogs. Um, yeah, you can say there's a, there are a few dogs. Fewer, or, or fewer, yeah. fewer dogs. You say fewer if you're comparing it with something else. If you're just stating that there aren't very many, then you can say few. You don't have to have the ER. So you can say, I have a few dogs. Or you could say, I have fewer dogs than my neighbor. Okay. Um, it says you compare non-count nouns with more and less. So there's more water, less oil, more dancing, less money. So, for example, with the word sunshine, if you wanted to say that it there was it's sunnier today than it was yesterday, how could you how could you say that? Uh, today. Is more shiny. Is more shiny than uh, yesterday. Yeah, so you can use more. And remember, we're talking about nouns, so you don't want to use shiny because that's more. It's an adjective. So the noun itself is sunshine. So you can say sunshine. today there's more sunshine than yesterday, or yesterday had less sunshine. Okay, for my example, is it correct to say today is more shiny, or uh, this is incorrect for the grammatical issues? It's incorrect for gr for grammar because shiny is not a noun; it's an adjective. So you use more and less with nouns. So these, we're always talking about nouns right now. So shiny is used to describe the day, whereas sunshine is a is a noun; it's a thing. So it says you can use too many, excuse me, you can use too many with count nouns when you have more than you need. So if you had, let's say, more beds in your house than what you need, you could say you have too many beds. Um, if you, so can you tell me something in your house that you have more than you need? So a count noun. Maybe clothes? Yeah. It's, it's okay. Clothes. Or t shirts. So you have too many t shirts? Yes. Yeah, so you could you could express that to me, you know, I have way too many t shirts. I have too many t shirts. 
So you have more than you need. It's too many. But if we're talking about a non-count noun, then it changes to too much. So, for example, our non-count noun that we're talking about, sunshine. Sunshine is, an, is a non-count noun. So if, you, if today was really, really, really sunny, way more sunshine than what we need, then you could say we have, too much. yeah, sunshine. too much sunshine. I don't know if you can have too much sunshine, because <laughs> I love sunshine. But, you know, for the sake of <laughs> teaching, we have too much sunshine, more than we need. We need less. Okay, so now if we have or less we than say, what we need. We can say, sometimes we can say too hot. Too much. Yeah, you can say it's too hot. Okay. But again, hot is an adjective. So if you want to use the actual noun, so the noun being sunshine, then you would say too much. If you want to just describe it using an adjective, you could say it's too hot. They're both correct. So it just depends on how you want to express yourself. But if you want to talk about the actual noun, the thing that you have, you know, either too much of or too few of, then that's what you use. Okay. So it says you use too few with count nouns. This is considered negative since you do not have enough. So too few tables and chairs, too few cars in the street. So if I said that I have, I have too many purses. Uh, that means that mean you have uh, more than you need. What if I say I have too few purses? This is less than you need. You need more. You can buy more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the record, I have too many purses. <laughs> Not buying anymore. I've gone crazy. I know, I know. Only this have too many purses. I don't know why. We have an obsession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so always remember that if it's a word that you use too many with, so if it's a count noun, then your opposite would be too few. So too many and too few always go together. Now if you have too much of something, then your opposite becomes too little. So for sunshine, if what would be the opposite of too much sunshine? Uh, less. So what's the opposite of too much? Too little? Yeah, too little. So if I say too much sunshine, what would be the opposite? Too little. Yeah. So if it's a non-count noun that you would use too much with, if you wanted to make it negative because you do not have enough, then you use too little. So you'd never say, I have too, f you know, we have too few sunshine because too few is the opposite of too many, which you use for count nouns. So too many purses, too few purses, too much sunshine, too little sunshine. So if you use too much, you use too little. If you use too many, you use too few. Okay. So don't you don't want to say too many and too little. They don't go together. So much and little, many and few. Much and little, many and few. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's try some opposites. So I'm going to say that I have either too much, too many, too few, or too little something, and I want you to give me the opposite, okay? Okay. Okay, so, um, Muhammad, I have too many cups. Cups. Can you say it again? I, you broke up a little bit. Okay. I have too few of cups. Very good. Um, well, Muhammad, I have too much money. <laughs> Can you give me? <laughs> <laughs> no, because then I'd have too little. <laughs> I have too little of money. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, let's see. Muhammad, the river in town has too little water. There's not enough water. There's too little. Uh, the, the river, uh, which you say, <laughs> <have> too much. <laughs> the too river much. has too much water. Very good. Yeah. 
Um, how about uh, let's see, I I think America has too few. I don't know. We have a lot of everything here. <laughs> I think America has too many of everything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think America. Yes, I agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to say the opposite. <laughs> okay. I think uh, America ha has uh, too few of uh, things. <laughs> Very good. It was really bad because I was trying to think of something we have too few of, and I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> There's so much of everything here. We have to. Um, generally speaking, if you're just speaking very um, in general and not specifically, then you can just say we have too much. This could be of anything. So, you, if you're just speaking generally, you wouldn't say, "Man, America just has too many." That's more specific. Something you could count. If you're being general, you would say, "America has too much." Then and it's like, of who knows what? We have too much of everything. <laughs> Okay, it says fifth, there are similar words used when discussing count and non-count nouns. For example, it says you use hardly any in a negative manner when you have a few or a little. So, we talked about um, I, I have a few purses or there's a little sunshine. So, can you say both of those with using hardly any? Uh, sorry, can you explain hard, hardly any? Because this, this is the first time I hear Okay. It. Sure, so hardly any means a few or a little. Okay. So, have you ever heard the word barely? Barely? Maybe, yeah. yeah. So, barely and hardly are very similar. So you could say barely any or hardly. They both mean the same thing. They both mean you have very few or very little. So if you do not have enough of something, you can say you have hardly any of them. So I have today there's hardly any sunshine or in my closet I have hardly any purses. It means I have very few. So it doesn't matter if it's a count noun or a non-count noun. If you have not enough, you can use hardly any. For both uh, count and non-count uh, nouns? Yes. Okay. And so, this means few and little? Mm-hmm. Little. So if you wanted to tell me that, um, let's see. If you want to tell me that you don't have enough money, what could you say? Yes. Uh, I'm hardly have any money. It's okay. Very good. Okay, what if you want to tell me that you don't have enough hats? I'm hardly have any hats. Very good. I hardly have any hats. Hardly means negative. So I yes. didn't use the negative. I um, hardly didn't uh, haven't or didn't have any hats. This is incorrect. Yeah, you you don't want to make both words negative in English. That's called a double negative. Hardly by itself is a negative. Okay. So you don't have to say I hardly don't have. You just say I hardly have. Hardly makes it negative. Okay. So you can use this all the time. I hard oh, hardly uh, da, 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 da. so or you can say I have hardly any da 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 so you can you can phrase it either way I have okay okay so barely is exactly the same. So where you see hardly, you can also say barely. I barely have any hats. I there's barely any sunshine. It's this 
practically the same word. Okay. Another word you can use with both count and non-count nouns is some. So you use some when talking about an unspecified amount, negative, neither negative or positive. So some pencils, some hardware, some tables, some furniture. You could say some sunshine, some cars, some hats, some water, some oil. It doesn't matter if it's a count noun or a non-count noun. If you want to say that you have an unspecified amount or, you know, not a specific amount, you use some. So, if you don't know how much of it is, of there that there is, you just say some. I have some. You have some of anything. <laughs> I have some money. We have some countries. I have some chairs. If there's a noun and you don't know how many, you can say some. And some always plural. Yeah. Sometimes they say a sum of. Um, yeah, if you say some of, so for example, can I have some of your food? You're, you this want. Is plural. Yeah, you want a portion of that food, but the portion is unspecified. So you're not asking for a specific amount. You're not saying, can I have one spoonful of your food? You're saying, can I have some, some of it? So this is an unspecified amount. It could be one spoonful, or you could eat the whole thing. <laughs> so if you're not sure of the amount, or the amount is not specified, you use some. And you can use this with all nouns. It doesn't matter if they're a count noun or non-count noun. You can use some. Okay, so I just looked at the time. We're, we're quickly running out of time, so I'm gonna let me finish the lesson here. Um, you can use none of, none of the when you exclude all of the items in the group. So none of the bags, none of the water, none of the air, none of the molecules. So if you're excluding all of the items, then you can use none of the. And this is again with count nouns and non-count nouns. So if you don't want any of those items in that group, you're excluding all of them, then you can say none of them. You know, I don't, you know, I, I want none of the water. I want none of the molecules or none of the molecules are in here or none of the air in here is fresh. So whenever the entire group is excluded, you use none of the. And it's with all nouns. Okay. Count or uh, non-count? Count or non-count. Okay, most of the. <laughs> okay, so use most of the when you're referring to the, um, the majority of group items. So this is, again, count and non-count noun. So if you're referring to the large, you know, the biggest part of it, so most of the things in the group, you're referring to these things, you say most of the. So most of the bananas were ripe. Most of the time I do this, most of the boys go to college. Most of the people live in this city. So you're referring to the majority of a group of items. It doesn't matter if it's a count noun or a non-count noun. You use most of them. Now, when we're talking about these terms that we use with count nouns and non-count nouns, Remember that if it's a non-count noun, you still don't make that word plural. There is no plural form of that word. You never say most of the waters or most of the times or, you know, most of the oils. That word still remains in its singular form. There is no plural form of that word. If it's a count noun, then that word becomes plural. But you can use these phrases for both count and non-count nouns. Okay, all of the, so <laughs> we have some of the, none of the, most of the, all of the, all of the is when you're talking about every single item, so not the majority, every bit of it. So we just talked about, you know, most of the people live in the city. If every single person lives in the city, then you would say all of the people live in the city. If every single boy goes to school, then you say all of the boys go to school. So this is, you only use this if every single item in this group applies to this point. 
Okay, enough. <laughs> you have enough when you have the right amount of something. So when we talked about having an unspecified amount, we say some of, or um, if we have not enough, we say hardly any. If we have the right amount, just the right amount, then you have enough for count and non-count nouns. So you can say, I have enough food. That doesn't mean you have too much. It doesn't mean you have too little. It means you have the right amount. And the fruit, I can make it uh, plural or this is a uh, plural fruit? Fruit, that is, it's plural. So fruit. Without um, S? No S. It's a non-count noun. So you never say fruits. You know, you wouldn't say I have. You wouldn't say I have two pieces. I mean, I've, I have two fruits. You would quantify it. I have two pieces of fruit. Or even if you were saying in general, I like fruit. You don't make it. There's no s. Now again, I'm not gonna lie to you. You've probably heard it, <laughs> and I'm sure you you have heard people say fruits. It's just not, it's incorrect, yeah. but you will hear it. Many times I hear it. I'm sure you have. I do not doubt you. <laughs> because I, I, write it. I have I heard write people it. say it. Yes. <laughs> At the um, restaurant and cafe, they write it. Mm, it. You can say fruits in certain instances, like you know. It's still not even correct. Like if the fruits of your labor, so like the benefit of the work you're doing, but still you should say fruit, the fruit of your labor. Fruit. So really it's never grammatically correct to put an S on fruit, but people do it all the time, so you will hear it. So you'll know the right way. Now if you say it right or wrong later, <laughs> that's your business, but it's good to know the right way. Okay, our last one, a lot of. You use a lot of in situations where you have a numerous amount of something. So, for example, if you have 60 cars, I don't know anybody has 60 cars, but if somebody has 60 cars, you could say they have a lot of cars. You know, if somebody has, you know, 40 cups, they have a lot of cups. So anytime you have a large amount of something or a numerous amount, then you can say a lot of. A lot of. Yeah. Can I say too much cars? Or too, ma too many cars? Yes, you can say too many cars. Too many cars. And good job catching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes you feel good. When a student corrects themselves, that means they really understand the material. Yeah. All right. We have gone through this whole lesson, and we are completely out of time. <laughs> so I don't have another class for two hours. So before I, I, I don't have to rush off, do you have any questions about what we've gone over? No, thank you very much. OK. So I've been trying really hard to end each class with an idiom or an expression, because it's really important for you guys to learn these. So I don't have a lot of time to explain one, but I'm going to give you one, and you can take a chance when you, when you have time to look it up. Okay, so if somebody says they're up a creek, it means they're out of options. So they, they're, they're stuck. So it's when you're in a bad situation. So for example, if you were on a creek and you ended up up creek with no paddle, so the full expression is up a creek without a paddle then you would have no way of getting back to the bottom of the creek. You couldn't get back to where you were. So if you're in a really bad situation and you have no way out, then you say you're up a creek. Yeah. So that's your expression for today. <laughs> okay. So try using it. You know, if you see that some, if you're about to get in a situation, you're like, oh man, if I, if, if I do that, I'm really going to be up a creek. You know, if I do that, I'm going to be in a really tight spot. There's no way of getting back. So anytime you're facing a decision that might put you in a bad position, you can say, I don't want to do that. I'll, you know, I'll be up a creek. It's a good, it's a good English idiom for expressing when you have no options.
or you're out of options. Okay, <laughs> that's all. All right, I'll I'll be I have another class in two hours, so I'm gonna take a little break. But if I don't see you again, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you very much. Stephanie. Try to find something fun to do, and we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> okay. Okay. I hope you have a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mohammed. Goodbye. Bye.